Aloha Ohana. God bless you, your household, and your Ohana in the mighty name of Jesus. All right, I hope you guys can hear me okay. Um, today, this word I'm going to be sharing with you, we're going to be talking about our eyes, yeah? Not, not seeing through carnal eyes, but seeing with our spiritual eyes, seeing what the Holy Spirit is shining in our life on the areas we need to work on, recognizing the individual we are today, hallelujah, and not not pondering on the, the individual who God has been continuously leading us and guiding us out from the darkness, out from our old ways, and truly delivering us, Lord, by the Lord's love and by His healing, amen, by His hand, hallelujah. And by doing so, by getting into His word, yeah, that we can recognize and see where God had His hands upon our life. And for most of us, we, we see God there every day every second every moment that's what we want to do is see god there right most of us that's what we want to do we want to recognize him amen we want to acknowledge him and be grateful for everything that we have today all that we are today and it's all because of him amen and if we are looking at our life and in the areas of where what what we don't have or something that we recognize that we would like to receive the thing is when you plant a seed in the pot, it only stays in that size pot for a while. It outgrows its environment. It outgrows its pot. It needs room for its roots to spread and take deeper roots, grabbing onto that soil so you can grow big and strong and be able to withstand the wind, right? What is same like us as a child of God, when we're getting into God's word, our roots are getting deeper and deeper and deeper into his word. Jesus Christ is that foundation. He is that good soil. And it is his will, Heavenly Father's will, that will be done in our lives on this earth as it is in heaven. Amen. And when we can see and recognize like, hey, I've outgrown my environment or I've outgrown um, this one particular area at my job and I feel like um, I'm, I'm ready for that next step. But you feel like maybe your bosses or the people around you or the people who are ahead of you um, in a business sense or anywhere. Maybe it could be someone who has a title and you feel like you should be in that position. What if you get promoted, right? If you get promoted, the thing is, are we ready, right? Are you ready? And the same way with God, we got to be ready, right? We all want to be promoted. We all want to go up into heaven. We all want to be in our Father's house. But don't wait until everything go haywire. Don't wait to that last minute. Because you just never know by a blink, of a blink of an eye just like that. You could be gone. I could be gone. We all could be gone. Right? We don't know what tomorrow has in store for us. We don't need to know. But what we do need to do is recognize what are we doing with what we think we know not only carnally now because this ain't going to get you far just carnal way of living ain't going to get you far okay because then you're going to reach that point of when it's time for you you end up pass away you end up die now what's going to happen to your soul after you die okay that's what we want to prepare and be ready for before it's too late we want to address what address the fact that you and i we are a sinner we need a savior and that is who jesus christ amen he is the son of god so without jesus we have nothing there's no point in living this life if you ain't got jesus christ but truly and honestly when it's all said and done you think because your name is on the title or the deed that it belongs to you but once you're gone what's hap what happens to that right if you don't have children and if you have children, it get passed down to them. So now that we are living here, right, in this vessel, in this body, right, your body is your vessel, but it's not your vessel to do what you want to do. You are a living temple of God. Amen. Everything about you, He knows. The things you, in, the things you've endured, the things you enjoy, the the stuff that you want to do, God sees all of that. But he knows exactly where you're going to go in the very end. He already knows his plans for you. And all of his plans for you 
will be established hallelujah that's why you're still here today amen praise the lord praise the lord for your good health and if you do feel aches and pains in your body or you feel stress and all of that all you have to do is cry out to the lord and surrender your heart surrender your mind surrender all of it even the 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 thoughts and the words that you've been speaking that's been just pouring down negativity negativity and throwing shade over your own self we do that but the words that we speak that's why we have to watch the stuff that we say to ourselves or we believe in our own lives because the adversary is a liar he can tell you you weak and you can't do it or you're not smart enough right or you never go enough schooling or um, look at all this, the things that you've done in the past. Nobody's going to want to listen to you. How are you successful? We don't, we can't see any materialistic gain. So how is that proof that you have riches? What riches are you trying to try to um, push on these people to, to gain here on this earth? And I'll tell you right now, the riches I speak of is the riches that the Holy Spirit speak of. And that's the riches that only God can give you. So God is saying, store your treasures in heaven. Because where your heart is, that's exactly where you are. You are where your heart is. That that's, sums it all up. Okay? If your heart is yearning for the things of this world, status, money, control, power, greed, the excess of wanting more and more and more and more, if your want is always just more, this world is not. This world will not be able to fulfill that bottomless pit of wanting more. Okay, like numbers are infinity. Numbers can keep going, right? And that's the appetite of a person who is conforming to the world is this there's never going to be enough the answer is always going to be they want more 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 and look at the state of the earth the planet it is being constantly raped water is being tainted by neg negligence or destroyed on purpose to kill the richest the richness of a culture of a people who have been seeded here way 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 long time ago before the generation before me and the one before that long time ago generation seated here by god's will and his planet everybody doing their part like how the birds the bees the butterflies all the cattle all the animals out there and the creatures that god created them they each had a purpose and a part of a whole entire ecosystem working together just like the plants their roots when they're rooted in the ground they all communicate it's like a, a neuron system it's like the brain the central system in the earth and they communicate with their roots through energy through the environment the wind the rain the everything everything is all connected same as us human beings each and every single person you see out there they are our neighbors amen some of them are our brothers and sisters in christ some of them are lost and, and don't have a shepherd some of them just don't know some of them are confused some of them are battered bruised and they're wounded warriors and every single one of us no matter what condition you are in the physical or in the spiritual 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 aspect hallelujah no matter what con what what state or condition you are in you need Jesus Christ every step of the way amen no matter how your life look here on earth you need Jesus Christ because without him without God you have nothing okay without him you have nothing family I had the nice cars I had the nice house never own them renting okay so I don't want to buy one house yet I will one day but my goal is not to buy a house Okay, God knows my goal and my plan, hallelujah, it's in his hands. It's already established, hallelujah, amen. He's just getting me ready for him, okay. Sometimes that's how it is, Ohana. Okay, God already has it for you, but he may keep prepping you and getting you ready for the blessings, okay. So that's what we're doing, all of us right now, we got to get ready. Be ready, amen. Not get ready, but be ready. 
all that you can do to stand amen okay because the whole entire world is drowning in wickedness and in sin we all must repent we all must keep our eyes fixed on jesus we all must be out there loving one another and not stop throwing hate stop trying to take when we're all supposed to be giving freely if each and every single one of us did our part that god has put us here to do and he says what to love right to forgive amen to persevere to push forward to, to be that living example yeah by his stripes we are healed so whenever somebody do an offense towards us boom we're over there all wounded and we're hanging on to that we cannot look past what that person just did oh but i'm pouring my heart out to this person i did everything for them but they keep hurting me they keep doing this they keep taking advantage god is saying okay get up love them anyways forgive them but keep pushing forward maybe that's something that there's something that you gotta do differently Maybe you're getting too involved in their life. Maybe you need to take a step back and just focus on getting yourself right and correct, right? Something that's how it is. You know, like I said, when you want to help and then you help, help, and then all of a sudden it's not you helping. It seems like you're doing more harm than good, but you had the very best intentions of helping. When you're sharing your testimony, when, you, when you're being authentically you, in the rawest and realest way that you can because that's who god created you to be you truly walking as a child of god unapologetic about who you are because you know that you are who god created you to be today and that's what you are doing you're just simply being you and god says shine through keep your eyes fixed on him continue to do your own work the inner work okay not so much do 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 and help everybody by just doing your part, your inner work, meaning fixing your eyes truly on the prize, getting into God's word, okay? Getting into God's word and allowing his word to marinate in here, allowing your soul to sing to him day and night, amen. Never cease praying, always stay prayed up. Keep praying and praying because God is the one who's watering every single seed that you sowing. Don't underestimate the power of your prayers. Don't underestimate the power and the might that is in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't underestimate the covering of the blood of Jesus over your life. Because with the blood of Jesus covering you, you are guided, protected, highly favored. And he loves you very much. You continue to keep on working on you. And stay within, stay on that path. When you look ahead of the path, who do you see? Let it be Jesus Christ that you see. Amen. And when you care to try and look back, let it be that you turn your back and you, you give in a hand to lift one other brother or another sister up. And not look back with pondering of what if, or what if this, or what if that, or coulda, shoulda, woulda. All of that shoulda, coulda, woulda is irrelevant in your life. What matters the most is what's happening right now. What Jesus Christ already has done. He said it is finished. And when he coming back, he coming back with his judgment. He coming back to scoop us up. He coming back to call us home, hallelujah. And we will, in Jesus' name, we got to keep our, our faith in him, keep trusting in him, and not, not letting this world, amen, not letting this world seep in, taint us, corrupt us, get us swept away and offer of what is the truth, of the matter is the truth of the matter is this is all temporary we are soldiers here this life that everybody trying to cultivate here that this is it i want to be able to retire and enjoy my family and give riches onto my next generation that's all good and all but what about their salvation what about when when they pass away and when they die where are they going to go that's the most important thing of what everybody should be looking at is what's going to happen to you after you pass away. Where are you going to go? Right? Because this life here, temporary. Your soul is eternal. So where your soul is going to go? Are you going to go back home to our Heavenly Father? Or are you going to go down there with the other guy? The adversary? The devil? Okay? Because he's doing all he can to get your eyes looking on the sideline. To get your ear tickled of what they're saying over there. Getting your mind wandering about all kinds of different things other than what actually matters. We've all been there. 
been there and done that. And this is a daily thing. The adversary is trying to trip you up and get you snared and get your eyes focused on other things that don't matter. The adversary is trying to get you to close your eyes. Get your ears filled with all these distractions, all this chitty chatter on the sidelines. That's so why you gotta be mindful of the people you cruise and you hang around with, okay? Because not everybody you call a friend is actually a friend. The best example of a friend, that's, that's Jesus Christ, okay? The Holy Spirit is, he sticks closer than a brother. He is our comforter, amen? He's the one who helps us discern. He's the one leading us to and through truth in the mighty name of Jesus. It's Jesus Christ who is that, that, that firm and solid foundation that each and every single one of us needs. Amen. Proclaim it, trust it, believe it. Put your faith in God. Amen. Put your faith in Him. Okay. All right. I'm going to get into... Um, the first one we're going to read is Matthew chapter 6, verse 22 and 23. And it is written, oh, okay, 21, verse 21, we read, okay? And it is written, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Verse 22, it is written, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Verse 23, it is written, but if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? Okay. Um, I'm going to go on and read 24. It is written, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the other and despise the other you cannot serve god and mammon okay so it's like money for the love of money money itself is not evil money is just a tool okay money is just a tool a tool that can be used to purchase you already know what money can purchase okay groceries pay bills buy clothing all kinds of stuff right People, people think that money itself is evil. Money itself is not evil. It's what people do with money and what people are willing to do for money is what's evil. The root of the individual and their, their um, motives of the transaction that they're making is what's evil. It's their heart, okay? Everything that comes out of our mouth is from our heart. So we gotta watch what we say, right? What we say. The words we choose to use, the words that we speak to others, hey, that's something we all got to work on, right? I want to be more gentler, okay? I want to be more gentler. I don't have patience with certain people, okay? Like, especially those who are, like, hard-headed, you know? Hard-headed, or they refuse to hear, so... I don't have patience so what I do is I'll just one not talk to you or I'll just stay stay clear of you and not you know whatever if I don't have to deal with you then I don't have to deal with you right I'm not gonna go ahead and put myself in the front of you to get you to hear me if you don't want to hear me you don't want to hear me right right and I feel like we're going off track a little bit but forgive me um, the whole point of this of me reading this to you guys is because these are the, the scriptures that is going over talking about the eyes and it's very important because the stuff that we watch you know like movies and the things that we listen to music all of these things influences us in some way and we have to be very mindful like how when God says you have to watch the company that you keep right and um, when you hanging out with people who love God also and who edify you in Jesus name and you guys study together you guys are able to have deep conversations about God and all that is of heaven okay like you guys can just get into some awesome conversations and you both growing 
you both sowing good seeds into one another and God is right there in the midst of both of you and just watering every seed that you guys are sowing. You guys are cultivating a garden together in Jesus' name, okay? Um, God, he sees that, right? But the adversary, he also sees you and your efforts. So when you're reading your Bible and stuff like that, that don't really get the devil scared. The devil get worried and shook up when you're actually applying what God is showing and revealing to you. When you apply God's word to your life. When you apply God's word into your prayers. When you're pleading the blood of Jesus over your front door or for all the doors in your home. And when you're pleading the blood of Jesus over every window and windowsill of your home. When you are doing this and you're pleading the blood of Jesus over the very foundation of your home. When you're pleading the blood of Jesus, the adversary is shook up because he has no authority there. He is not able to enter. Okay? And whatever was there is gone. Okay? In the mighty name of Jesus. You have to know that there is power in his name, in his blood, and in his love. Okay? God is love and God loves you. Okay? God loves you. So when it says that the body, okay, if the light of the body is the eye, okay, because that's how our eyeball can see, right? If we, we talk about the mechanics of the eye, like, boom, the light shine in and it's reflected and all the things that's going on in your eyeball to make it function to where you can see, right? But we're not walking around in this world, in this life, with just what we carnally see, okay? But when you're walking with the Holy Spirit and He discerning for you, you see things that other people cannot see. And it's not only just eyesight you see on the spiritual spectrum, but you're seeing in a different, it's like you're looking at the window, if there's a sheer curtain there, you can see out the window even with the sheer curtain is there. You can tell the difference on what's on what side of the curtain. Well, with carnal eyes, all you see is, oh, I cannot see good because the curtain is down. But I can see a little bit, but I can't see good with the curtain. But if you move the curtain, then you gonna be able, they, the person of the world gonna be able to see like out the window, oh yeah, 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 okay. But when you're looking at out the window as from a spiritual, with spiritual eyes, you're looking out the window and there's a sheer curtain there, but you can tell the difference on what's on both sides of that curtain, whether it's there or not. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I, I hope I'm not confusing you. It's hard to explain that. If you if you know, you know. Okay, I'm going to be quiet about that because some of you must be thinking like, what? I don't get it. Some of you are like, I get it. Stop trying to explain. You're making it worse. Oh, boy. Okay. Moving on. Going into Luke chapter 11, verse 34. Here it is. Oops. And it's similar like the other one we just read. Verse 34, it is written. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thine eye is single, thy whole body also is full of light. But when thy eye is evil, thy body also is full of darkness. Okay? That's why it's important to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Keep our eyes fixed on God's word. Keeping our eyes fixed on all the path that we're walking on. Amen. And continuously taking inventory. Yeah. And also be mindful and let it be Jesus Christ that be the filter for your eyes, the filter for your ears, the filter for your mind, for your thoughts, the filter that is wrapped right around your heart. Amen. In your heart. Excuse me. Let it be Jesus. Yeah. Let it be Jesus. So the next one is Psalm chapter 17 verse 8 and it reads keep me as the apple of the eye hide me under the shadow of thy wings and verse 8 it reads 
from the wicked that oppress me, from my deadly enemies who compass me about. Okay. So this one is a prayer of David. Okay. If you want to go and read this um, Psalm 17 entirely, it is up to um, 15 verses. So you can do so. And that was just verse 8 and 9 that I read. Okay, keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. Okay, that's so beautiful. Yeah. And just like that, you can call out to him, yeah? Call out to God. You call out and you just sing, sing from your heart. Allow your soul to just sing to him, yeah? Amen. Okay, so we can get into 1 John chapter 2, verse 16, and it reads, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Okay? Amen. Yeah. I'm going, I, sorry, I'm going to read them from... Um, verse 15 it reads love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him and verse 16 and it reads for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world okay there you go distractions right distractions your eyes what we're fixing our eyes on what got our attention okay the world is very noisy and sparkly and got all kinds of wonderful looking things that catches your 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 eye and gets your um your attention so basically what is the apple of your eye in this world let it be jesus christ is the apple of your eye amen Okay, let it be Jesus Christ, the one that got your attention. Hallelujah. Okay, so, you know, getting into God's word and, you know, just breaking it down to where you can absorb that as much as you can. Like, just don't take it all in all at once, okay? You pray, you ask the Lord to reveal himself, to show you a deeper, um, you know, deeper meaning in his word. For, you ask him for discernment. You just have that conversation get comfortable with the lord okay get comfortable with him get to know him okay ma'am get to know him and how are you gonna get to know him right well you gotta start talking to him right and not only start talking to him but you gotta start listening start listening to him start listening for him you know he can talk to you with one little leaf that is doing a little dance in the wind he gonna talk to you with being able to somehow hear the buzz from a bee that's on a flower that's way up there. He's gonna talk to you with that slight cool breeze that gently strokes your cheek. God talks to you in so many ways. But God gonna find a way to talk to you to where he knows he can get your attention. But you gotta learn how to unplug from this world, okay? You gotta unplug from this world tap into God and continuously keep on pushing forward and not to give up okay yes you're gonna lose friends yes you're gonna lose family members yes some of you may even change your occupation because you're walking with the Lord and you no longer feel like you know where you work is it, it may be taking you off track and you recognize like okay I I as a child of God, I don't feel like this is a job that is any longer fitting for me or appropriate for me, and I don't feel comfortable in this setting no more. I outgrew this environment. Therefore, boom, you just climb out of that pot and you go plant your roots in a bigger pot where the Lord will send you and put you, and you just continue to glorify His name. Amen? Amen. And don't get too comfortable in that pot because God just might uproot you again and put you somewhere else. And you, all you got to do is just keep your eyes fixed on Him. Hallelujah thank him amen and keep on pushing through right keep radiating his love keep sowing seeds in his name keep on shining bright hallelujah amen amen 
Okay, so now we're going over Isaiah 32, verse 3, and it reads, And the eyes of them that see shall not be dim, and the ears of them that hear shall hearken. And the eyes of them that see shall not be dim, and the ears of them that hear shall hearken. Okay shall hearken shall hear you shall hear hallelujah you shall see and your eyes will not be dim okay hallelujah shine bright in the mighty name of jesus okay Six. let's get into psalm 119 verse 18 and it reads open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Amen. That's Psalm 119, okay? And if you want, you can go ahead and um, I recommend you read further, okay? Um, that's, that's beautiful. Open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God bless every single one of you. Yes, Holy Spirit, I thank you so much for leading me and guiding me to and through truth in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Okay. Luke chapter 24. There's a few, I just recommend you just go on to Luke and read Luke 24, but I'll go ahead and read Luke 24 verse 16. Where are we? Oh, right here. Okay. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. Verse 17 it reads, And he said unto them, It is written, what manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad okay oh that's why okay 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 231 oh, okay i was gonna read it all the way to 31 i see okay forgive me guys verse 18 it reads and the one of them whose name was cleopas answering said unto him art thou only a stranger in jerusalem and has not known the things which are come to pass there in these days verse 19 it reads and he said unto them it, it is written what things it reads and they said unto him concerning jesus of nazareth which was a prophet mighty in deed and word before god and all the people Verse 20 it reads, And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. Verse 21, But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And all, besi all besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Verse 22 it, it reads, Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early as the the so so far verse 23 and when they found not his body they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels which said that he was alive amen verse 24 and a certain of them which were with us went to the sulfur and found it even so as the woman had said but him they saw not verse 25 then he said unto them it is written O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Verse 26 it is written, Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Verse 27 it reads, And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he, exp he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Verse 28 it reads, And they drew nigh unto the village, neither they went and he made as though he would have gone further verse 29 it reads but they constrained him saying abide with us for it is toward evening and the day is far spent and he went into tarry with them verse 30 it reads and it came to pass as he sat at, 
and sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave to them. And verse 31, and their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. Okay. It is God who opens your eyes. It is God the reason why you can recognize that you know him, okay? That is why, because God has opened your eyes. And there's a lot of people walking around without their eyes open. Their eyes are wide shut, you know what I mean? Their eyes are wide shut. Um, the day after my birthday, I, I looked up and I saw the clouds. I was like, the clouds look kind of interesting. Um, so I went upstairs to look over the balcony to look out towards the ocean. Um, I realized it, it looked like, cause the whole entire sky was like overcast with clouds. And there were like two, two holes in the clouds that looked like eyes and they were, it looked like they were like squinting. So it kind of kind of like I was looking from inside, looking out, and then I could see the sunset through the eye, the two pukas that looked like the eyes that were closing. And um, I saw that and I was like, wow. So I sat on that for a while and then I, I looked up a few scriptures talking God, um, talking about eyes and you know our, our bodies being full of light and our eyes, right? And the condition of our eyes it is basically talking about like, you know, walking around in this world carnally or are we really allowing God to lead us through? You know what I mean? Is he the lamp upon our feet? Are we getting into his word? Are we putting our trust in his promises? Are we being faithful for he is faithful? You know, um, really being not sort of, not to get ready, but to be ready. You know what I mean? Because you already, with Jesus, you already have everything you need. So if you love Jesus and you got Jesus, then it's not really a matter of getting ready. But with Jesus, you ready already. You know what I mean? You got to know that. That with Jesus, you're already ready. But you have to stay focused on him. And not so focused on who you are in this world. Because that doesn't matter. What matters is him and who we are in him. Not who we are in this world. The focus is on who you are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Right? And with Jesus, we're already ready. But if we, we live in our life on who we are in this world, now you're in the sense of, oh, I got to get ready. I got to prepare. With Jesus, you already get everything you need. Amen. He already a solid foundation. He is the door. He is the bridge. He is the key. He is the way. Amen. And that's all you need. So be ready in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay. All right, Ohana. God bless you, your household, and your Ohana in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And Aloha.